Right, hello and welcome to the Geek Lab. And recently we've been doing some experiments on this Compaq DesPro 2000 uh, 133 MHz Pentium. And they didn't quite turn out right. And it's ended up with its this hard drive white formatted. It's got no operating system on it. Now, I don't have a boot disk for Windows 95. I have the floppy drive version, which you can see in another video. I'll put a link up there, uh, where you can see me install the whole operating system of floppy drives. But I'd have to go through, I'd have to install DOS, I'd have to install Windows 3.1, because I've only got the upgrade 95 version, so I'd have to do Windows 3.1, then Windows 95, all off floppy. Life's too short. So I was sitting around wondering what I can do to recover this thing, and I was, I've got an image of Windows 95 off the internet, but then, no matter what I did with any floppy drive, I couldn't seem to get uh, the Windows 95 floppy drive boot disk to work. So, things are getting pretty desperate, and I was getting pretty annoyed. So, but then I looked up at the shelf above the computer, and... Yes, Windows NT Workstation. Boxed complete. Uh, so I, th I thought to myself, well... I could put this on, but I have no idea whether Windows 95 software will work with this, because it does say, include these, includes Windows 95 for Windows 95 interface, Windows NT power. So, well, although this is basically Windows 95 uh, corporate version, will Windows 95 software and games run with this? So then I thought, hmm, I can make two videos out of this. First one, we get this thing running, complete with Windows NT and install all the drivers which is another point, they are Windows 95 drivers so I do not know if they'll work with this that's what we're going to do in this video and then for a second video we can try some Windows 95 software see if it runs on this so, enough gabbling let's get on with this right, and here it is an original Windows NT workstation boxed version for PCs without Windows NT Workstation. Includes NT4, Service Pack 4. This is basically Windows NT updated to the Windows 95 era because uh, it adopted many of the new technologies of Windows 94 version 4. So, just looking for where it says there's a certificate. And, right, let's have a look at the gumph. Microsoft Windows NT Workstation version 4 combines the ease of use of Windows 95 with the power of Windows NT. Enjoy the enhanced usability and efficiency of the updated Windows 95 interface. The Microsoft Windows NT Workstation 4 desktop now includes the familiar Windows 95 start menu, Microsoft Internet Explorer, desktop icons such as My Computer, Network Neighborhood, Recycle Bin, My Briefcase, and more system requirements personal computer with a 486 or higher processor or risk based workstation with alpha mips or 4x00 or power pc processor 16 megabytes of ram typical available hard disk space required 110 megabytes vga wow risk base sorry power pc processor I wonder if you could ever uh, install this onto an old Mac. Hmm, probably not. But there we go. Let's see what we get, what we're gifted inside by Microsoft. Oh, and uh, yeah, typical concern of the era. Year 2000 and Euro currency updates. And includes Service Pack 4. Right, okay. Typical folding cardboard thing that Microsoft gave you at the time. So, oops. So we have one brown envelope. No, it's not offering you money to install this. It's offering you three floppy disks to start up the booting process of the installation. So put them away. 
far better folder than you get on some other versions I've seen. Oh well. Uh, this is the service pack four. There we go. Uh, December '98. The operating system disk itself. Oh yes, with the key. Not the key, because it's no use anymore really. Microsoft Windows NT Workstation. Start here. The old book, which you don't get anymore, unfortunately. Because, yeah, handy to have these sort of things. And here's your stuff. Limited warranty. Subsidiary information. Help us to help you. Yes, you register now so we can send you loads of crap about stuff you don't care about. There we go. And a piece of paper. Woo piece of paper. Read me first. Ooh, there you go. For a list of the products that's been designed to meet wo Windows logo criteria. Go to there. There we go. So that's what you get in the box. Let's get this on the system. Right, as seen before, it's already booted to this screen where it says non-system disk or disk driver. So I'm going to put in the first floppy. Strike any key when ready. Let's see what it does. Obviously it's going to accept NT, it'll run NT because it's built to run on any platform but the question is, will it work with NT fully? Will we get sound, proper video? Uh, for your reference, I have set that monitor to 4.3 because it gives a more natural look to the stretched out crap that you get. So, uh, it's inspecting. I'll be back once this does something interesting. Okay. Typical, it sits there for a while, does nothing. As soon as I put the air conditioner on, because I haven't got it running, because it's loud, and I want to do the video, as soon as I put that on to stop sweating, it asks for this too. So, that's exactly what we're going to do for you. Hopefully these floppies, there's three of them, as you know, hopefully they're all working, so. Because I've never tried this. I've had it up there for years, but never tried it, so here we go. Right, this two. Off you go, do your magic. Right, it's still doing its stuff, but uh, just to report that it says Microsoft Windows NT version 4 Build 1381 One system processor, 64 megabytes of memory Multiprocessor kernel So, there we go It's still doing its stuff Right, a couple of seconds later we have Welcome to Setup. The Setup program for the Microsoft Windows NT operating system version 4 prepares Windows NT to run on your computer. To learn more about Windows NT before continuing, press F1. Nah. To set up Windows NT uh, to repair damaged or to quit setup. Uh, so to press up Windows NT. To, to press up? To set up Windows NT. Right. Setup automatically detects floppy disk controllers and standard ESDI IDE hard disks without user intervention. Yay! We like that. Uh, however, on some computers, detection of certain other mass storage devices, such as SCSI adapters and CD-ROM drives, can cause the computer to become unresponsive or to malfunction temporarily. Uh, yeah, we'll just go let it do its stuff. So press enter and see if it'll do it. Please insert the disk labeled in Windows NT workstation. Three, which will be you then. Okay, All right. Kachinga, and press boingy bong. Press enter. Let us see it does magic. Yep, loading device driver for IDE CD ROM. Yeah, so it's found the CD ROM. It's installing the driver for it. Good sign. Jesus. It must have sat there for about 30 seconds doing nothing. I thought, oh, sugar, it's uh, it's gone. But no, it's continued. It's a good sign. But it uh, gets everything else. All right, setup has recognized the following mass storage devices in your computer. CD-ROM. To specify additional adapters, CD-ROM drives, or special disk controllers. Press S if you do not have any device support disks from mass storage device manufacturer. If you want to specify the video, uh, specify, enter, continue. So I'll just press enter. Hang on. If you do not have any device, aborted this one must do it. Device me. Do not want to specify. Oh, yeah, just press enter. Okay. Loading device driver. Yes, that's a DI. Yep, loading it. It's going. It's loading the device driver of the NT file system. Oh, right. 
I'll let it continue. Right, welcome back. Uh, it is a while later actually because it got to that stage and it complained there were no hard drives. Which turned out to be uh, when I tried to do the other experiment. Uh, I'd unplugged one hard drive and taken jumper off another. So I'm a prat and it took uh, ooh, right. It took me a while to uh, because I put one power cord from the PSU into the back of the hard drive and it still wouldn't boot. So I put another one in. That works fine. So there we go. Setup has determined that one of your more your hard drives has more than 1,024 cylinders because MS DOS is normally limited to 1,024 cylinders per hard disk. Some hard disk controllers offer special configurations to allow access to large disks in their entirety. These options are known as sector translation modes. If a disk has only slightly more than 1,024 cylinders, or such a mode is not enabled, a small portion of the disk remains inaccessible to MS DOS. Consult your computer or hard disk control documentation. If this is Enter. Okay. It's continuing to load. Uh, we will soon get to use this fancy sh Ooh, there we go, just as I said. We'll get to use this fancy schmancy news media call that they call CD-ROM. Uh, let's have a look. Anything special? Oh, it's got this uh, laser engraved patch sort of thing job going on. Nice design that, actually. Copyright 1985 to 1996. Operating system, version 4. Right, first of two because the second one has a uh, service pack on. So let's uh, get this one going. Yes, finally. Uh, press enter when ready. That's what it does. Ooh, license. Yeah. Page. Ah, gotta go through it. Uh, F1, F8, I agree. I agree. Right, okay. Windows NT setup. Setup is determined the computer contains the following hardware and software components. It's a standard PC. Nothing standard about my PC, you rude bugger. Display auto detect. Keyboard XTAT or enhanced. Yep. Keyboard layout is English, of course. Uh, US International, United Kingdom. There we go. Uh, Microsoft mouse, port mouse, include ballpoint. There we go. Right. Uh, and up. Right. The list below shows existing petitions and space available for creating new petitions. Use up and down arrows to move the highlights to an area in the list. To install Windows NT on the highlight petition or on petition space, press enter. Right. So we've got a fat disk. Uh, we've got two disks. Uh, to delete the highlight petition, press D. I don't think we need that. Uh, bestie. No, won't delete that. Bastard. Uh, yeah. D. E. To delete the highlighted petition, press D. So I can only delete that delete one and that one. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, just install it in there. I have no idea. Right, set up, install Windows NT on petition. Blah, 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 blah. On, da, 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 da. Select the type of file systems you want on this petition from the list below. Use up and down. Da, da. Uh, format petition using the FAT. Uh, hmm, format petition using NTFS. I think this is NTFS. Or Windows NT. So I'm just going to go with that. Why not? Uh, to format drive, da, 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 press F. F. There we go. Drive is formatting. Right, I'll be back when something else happens. Right, uh, if if Windows NT works fine with all the software, I'm just going to keep it as a Windows NT system. So I've just been reading the manual. I know it's not often you do that. And it says if uh, you're just using this for Windows NT, then just keep the NTF system for its advanced, for its advanced features, whatever they are. Set up installs Windows NT into your hard disk. Choose the location where you want these files to be installed. I'll go there. 
said we'll now examine your hard disk for corruption. <laughs> so I need to mean any uh, political files. <laughs> In addition to a basic examination, said we can perform more exhaustive second examination. This can be time consuming. I don't want. I want normal. There we go. This may take several minutes. Okie dokie, we can bypass that and just be right back. And in fact, just as I cut there, uh, it went to the copying file section. So the a couple of minutes turned out to be a couple of seconds. There we go. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, it's copied files and it's asking me to remove any disks. So that is what I am doing right now. And then press enter to restart the computer. And uh, boink, restarting. And we'll see exactly what happens. Uh, this has no BIOS battery in it, this computer, so it does loop around a few times before it will start. But I'll be back as soon as, as usual, anything else exciting happens. We'll be right back. Right, and it appears to be booting. It did uh, on startup ask if I wanted uh, VGA or VGA3 mode, but it didn't give me a chance to uh, respond to that. It's getting straight through, so I have no idea what's happening there. But, uh, yep, it appears to be doing stuff. And it's rebooted, so it's converted the file system, I think it was saying it was doing. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll just keep the camera rolling, we'll do a normal boot and see what happens. It does take a while, you can see the drives flashing there. There we go. Scary hairy. F1 boot. All because it's got no. There we go. Boink. That won't let me. Would not let me select that. Hello. Weird nurse. Oh, there we go. Hopefully it's not just going to loop around and do that again. Or else there will be trouble, boy. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, I wanted to put that back in. Yeah, it said this time that the uh, drive had been converted to NTFS and went straight for graphical stuff. So now it wants me to put Windows NT disk back in. Awkward oh, bugger. Please, did you, you can also click on the files to be cut from an alternative location. Okay. Right, okay. It's loading it, so. I might recognize. There we go. Let's recognize it. It's copying. Ooh, that was quick. Ooh. Right. Windows NT Setup. Welcome to Windows NT Setup Wizard, which will guide you through the rest of the setup. To continue, press next. There we go, off we go. This ain't taking too long at the moment. We shall see. Right, typical. Yeah, let's go on them. Oh. A lot of people don't know, you could just do this. Uh, when it asked that question, originally. CD key. Well, Windows NT is old, so CD key is 880. Right, keyboard is not working. Oh, that works. Ah, number lock. 880. 8333355. There we go. Name. RGVX. Go. Next. Password. Don't want one. Go away. No, I don't want a repair disk. Next. Install. Is Jimmy list. It's not going to be using some of them. Accessibility don't need that. Communications, well, we never know. Games, yeah, I love that. On them. And uh, next, installing networking, which is a bit ironic because this computer uh, will never be on the network. Well, mostly. I might uh, wait to network. Da -da -da -da. I just end up to a network adapter, remote access, computer uses the remote adapter. No. Okay, we'll just do it that way at the moment. There we go. We're going to get all the uh, finishing gubbins. Quite fast. Time zone. We are Greenwich Mean Time. Yes. Date and time. Uh, it doesn't matter on this. Close. What are you doing? Ah. 
Cinus compatible video adapter. Use the controls to select the size and number of colors for your display, then use the test button to preview those settings. Okay, we'll go two, six colors, and we'll go to a bit bigger, and if that will work. We'll shall see. Test. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Did you see? Yes, I saw that. Okay, shall we, shall we push it a bit more? <laughs> I have no idea how good this thing is, so... Test. Okay. That worked. Three, four, five. Yes, I saw that. Uh, so press the OK button and the display button. Okie dokie. Alright, it's now continuing, as you saw, copying files. So, I shall be back in a moment. Dong, dong, dong. Right, apparently it's been installed, so I have to remove the disks, which is uh empty workstation, because all the floppies are already out. And then, uh, restart El Computer. We'll see what it does on the restart. Not sure if I've got sound, because I'm not sure if the sound drive is working, or I've got it plugged into the right port, so we'll have to test that when the desktop is fully running, but we shall see what happens. Right, press control alt delete to log on, administrator, yeah whatever. So you ain't got no password. There we go, welcome to Windows NT. What's new? Close. Uh, close. Selected display resolution is invalid. Okay, right, okay. Maybe we got a bit too keen with the colours and shit there, so with the, that one, test. Okay. Looks okay. Yes, I'll go for that. Uh, apply. You're kidding, you've got to restart your computer for that. <sighs> yeah, old operating systems. Okay, I'll be back once that's restarted. Okay, it keeps saying that the video mode is uh, invalid. So what I'm trying to do is force it to install the drivers for my there we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh, service pack four. That's why it's gone weird. Thought something unusual going on there. Oh no. Hang on. Oh, that's service pack. Uh, no wonder it's hiding. Right. I need to put the original in, not the service pack disc. God. An idiot. Right. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Twiggy. Right, go. I'll do start up. There we go. Now hopefully. No, we don't want to set up Windows NT. We've just done that. You twonk. Drivers successfully installed. You must exit from the city properties. Okay. We shall do that. We shall reboot again. Close. Yes. Right, be right back. Oh yes, that looks better. After much playing around, uh, forcing it to download the drivers off uh, the disk, we seem to have 
a proper looking desktop. Wow! Right, sounds. Let's see if anything is playing. Okay, it looks like we have sound issues. So, uh, yeah, system. Uh, general performance, environment performance, hardware profiles. Properties, no. Just looking for the old hardware manager, user profiles. Properties, start up shutdown. Hmm, different on this one. Or I've just completely forgotten how to do it. Performance. Environment. Hardware profiles. General. Network. Ooh, pain. Okay, okay. Hmm. How do I... Devices. Ooh, don't want that. Hmm. See, because I'm a bit of an idiot, I don't know what sound card we've got. So, yeah. I'm going to play. No. Nope. Alright, I'm going to find some sounds that this can play and then see if it will play them. But we don't have a sound thing down there, which is a bit disconcerting. 1601, oh, 2018, that'll do. Right, okay. Yep, we're gonna have a look around, see what we can find. All right, uh, we're just on the uh, the mini Mac, sort of micro Mac, TV Mac, one paid 30 quid for. And it turns out that on hp.com, they have all the Windows NT drivers for this sound system. Although, uh, we've downloaded uh, the Sound Blaster 16 Windows 95 drivers already. Haven't put them on, they're still on this computer. But this one does have these ones as well. So I'm wondering if these are sort of generic. So I'm wondering if these are sort of these generic sort of files. So the only one way to find out, what I'm going to do is download it and see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, HP download. Oh, is this going to be a scam? HP download and install instructions. Let's try that. No, it wasn't bloody useful. I already had the page. Go away. Why would I want to go somewhere else and look for it? You are downloading the following. You are downloading the following file. No, I'm not. Reload. Unless it's appeared at the bottom there, and I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. It's appeared at the bottom. Right, so I can drop that because that's an exe file straight into my little drivers folder which I've created and that will be for transferring all of these onto CD and straight across so uh, so you just select your operating system windows windows NT and change and you get all the drivers there so we also need the BIOS seems to be okay uh, graphics 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 is there okay? Uh, we need sound, so we've got that one, we've got that one, and system software management, compact insight management, desktop agents for OS2, no, don't want that one, compact systems management toolkit, setup of VP and PC diagnostics. Now, I believe that one came on it originally, so I'm going to download that and install that. Let's see if that will work again, because that was like a BIOS system. 
when it started up. So I think we'll need that one. Let's have a look again. Operating system. Doing this with one hand, so because the other's resting on the big computer. So that's why I'm doing it a bit awkwardly here. So software system management, we've seen that one. And utility, remote services, smart client. I think uh, we have all we need. Enable compact CC runs can be basic programs. Ooh. I think we have all we need from this website. So I'm just going to burn this to disk. And uh, yeah, we should be sorted. I'll be right back. Right, right. CD is burnt. Uh, we'll put it in the drive. And uh, let's have a look, shall we? Right, so if we go uh, explore. Uh, D. It's Reddit. Now, this is the Sandblaster value uh, one, so. Do, 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 do. Ooh. What the hell? There's no EXE files. Oh. Well, let's just see. Set up disk one. Oh. What the hell? Okay. Hmm. I have the floppy drive version of that, so that's no biggie. What we'll do, I'll get oh, get the floppy disks, and we'll see if we can install it off that. It is the Windows 95 version, so it's going to be interesting to see if it works with NT. But we shall find out, shall not we? Mm, right, yeah, this is originally for Windows 3.1, so <laughs> we shall see. Uh, enter. Full installation. Uh, see the date, the center. Yeah. <laughs> ignore. Uh, oh, ignore. Proceed. Setting shown. Enter. Okay. Yep. We're full of shit. Uh, we need to get the Windows 95 version. Let's have a look. Just have a look. Shut down. No, you can't. Right. Okay. So we need to find the Windows 95 version. We shall do that. Okay, well that's well that's uh, burning. Uh, we go back on this. Okay, let's just have a look at some of the other stuff. Drive on packing is right protected. Press end. That didn't work. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Well, because this is NT, uh, yeah. I wonder if we can MS DOS boot this thing and put those two on that way. Although then we wouldn't have the uh, whoa, CD drives. So ah, those two ain't going on. Bugger. There is no way of getting with DOS. Let's have a look. Run. Uh, DOS. Do, because this is NT, I don't think it has access to DOS that easy. Command line. Programs. Oof. Command prompt. Right, so E. L. Five files. Ah, right. Right. Uh, SP4032. That's probably complain the same thing. Yeah, drive you on packing two is right protected. I wonder. Uh, DIR. C. Copy. SP4032. Copy. The E dot dot backslash. Uh, sp four zero three two dot exe sp four zero three two dot exe four zero three two go ah there we go <laughs> e right this is generic audio support so it might work okay uh, press C to continue. Agree. Compact is about to unpack da, 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 for data to see. Okay to continue? Yes, of course it is. 
and it's done it. Right, no idea what that, so if that's done anything. Here I are. Uh, and right, C, copy SP8126 dot EXE. Copy E dot backslash SP8126 dot EXE. <sighs> copy SP. Ooh. 8126 that's a folder is it a folder? Alright, oh, okay. Copy E dot dot backslash SP eight one two six one dot exe. Hmm. Copy <laughs> Say what? E dot dot backslash star dot star. Right, SP8126 space 1. The name specifier is not recognized as an internal external command operated by the. Ooh, right. Rename SP8126 space 1 dot exe. Uh, SP8126 dot exe. <coughs> That's a pain. Hmm. Okay, dokey. What we'll do then? There it is. Can we copy that across to there? Sorry, right, copy that to. It's already copied, doesn't it? Did. Right, C. So, if we get that, get rid of that. Okay. And then go back to there. Yeah, they are. Now we should just have 8126. Yes, SP8126. There we go. PC diagnosis. C to confirm. A to agree. Yes. Unpacking. And we should have over on this computer our other CD ready for the sound, hopefully. We can close that. And I'm just going to restart, just for the hell of it, see if that takes any effect. Possibly not, but it's worth a try, so we'll try. Okay, I've got the uh, Sound Blaster 16 files, so uh, I've got the original floppy disk, which I've put in the first one in here, and I'm running it on the, the command prompt again. Sorry for any background noise, but there appears to be works going on next door. So. Uh, what we're going to do, maybe being an idiot here, I don't know if this will work for Windows NT, but it's worth a try. So, uh, install. I know I use these for Windows 3.1, but no idea if it's going to work here. But I can't find any other drivers, so this appears to be my best option at the moment. So I'm going to go through this process. Oh, there we go. And uh, just get the screen a bit bigger for you. So you can see what's going on. Oh, it doesn't allow you to. Okay. That is it. That is how big your screen is going to be, sir. We will not allow you all to go any bigger. Because you're not worthy. Let me zoom in for you. Right. There we go. So, yep. Standard Sound Blaster installed. Do, do, press enter. Oh, I need to go. Alright. Okay. Full installation recommended. Yep. Here's your stuff. Uh, ignore. Ah, right. It's going to have the same thing again, isn't it? Mm. Try that. Try that. Might be just because it's running in NT. I wonder. Hmm. I have a plan. Do not worry, ladies and gentlemen. I have a plan. It may not work, but it is there. Be right back. So I am revealing my evil plan to the world. I have uh, the MS-DOS install disk, which is bootable, which I've booted up, and I will now exit it like that, and that gives me access to DOS. Now I may have been stupid here, but it's worth a shot, isn't it? Uh, if I go to C, will it allow that? Yeah, DIR. That's right. Not much on there. Um, F must be hidden. 
That's weird. Hmm. D. Doesn't want D. Even though D is in there. Hmm. Windows, where are you hiding? But anyway, just in case, let's see if I can install Sound Blaster software from here. So if I go uh, DIR, uh, no, it's just A backslash install. Might work, might not. It might be completely unsuitable for Windows NT. Windows NT might block it, but is there anyone, one way you're going to find out that for sure, isn't it? So I'll go through this process and uh, let's see. Uh, install. Paul is going to complain. No. Ah. Uh, Please don't drive is A, a C. Okay. Center. Yeah. Forty. It's gonna complain again, isn't it? Oh, thought it was gonna get it for a second then. Hmm. Like it's not getting letters, or well, these are the wrong drivers. I do not know. So, this is something, uh, yes. Uh, win. Will it do that? Nope. Okay, so we need to reboot. So, that out. That. Okay, so it looks like we're beaten for the moment on the sound side of it. It is a. Excuse you. The card is a CT something something something. It I will put, I will annotate on the screen exactly what that is. So we are a bit stuck at that. Apart from that, it all else appears to be working fan dabby doozy. So uh, with that in mind, what I want to do is get the sound working and then try some software. But well, that's going to be, try the VGA mode. That's going to be for another video. So in the meantime, if you enjoy this sort of uh, videos and want to see more then uh, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so it does tell you. You can also join us on our Facebook group and Twitter, links are down below. And if you really like the uh, channel you uh, can support us through Patreon, you'll get your name shouted out at the beginning of the next video and you'll be on the roll up at the end of the videos. And that's just changed back to a different screen. What a boss you gone back to the old one, so I'm going to have to redo that again. <laughs> Must have changed stuff with that. But that's for me to do in the meantime, so there we go. Right, so other than that, thanks very much for watching. And we'll look at the next one, where the Windows 95 software actually works. Well, thanks very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>